Hi guys, today we're going to do a, um, an update to the um, latest version of FXGL, which is 0 0.1.2. Um, we'll do a networking application, so uh, basically a very um, simple game that uses um, networking. Um, and we'll also um, package our application, so you can use a packaged version of the application to send over to your friends so they can run the game as long as they have a um, Java runtime environment installed. So the link in the description will lead you here which is the um, sort of archive for FXGL versions. You will need to download the latest version which is um, 0.1.2 just click on it, click raw, and you'll be prompted with a download link. Save file and just drag it over to some um, directory. I called it lib, and this is where we're, this is where we're going to place the FXGL um, library. So on your uh, click, right click on your project properties, Java build path, um, add jar file. Navigate to your uh, lib folder and select the FXGL library. Apply, OK, and that will um, sort of allow you to use the FXGL library. Um, if you want to know the new features, you can sort of go back and click FXGL, and there is a change log which lists um, new features, and some of them are. Um, really new, like physics engine integration, um, networking, quick time events, and a few others. Um, we'll do a tutorial on each of these features so that you'll able you'll be able to use them um, in your applications. But for today, it's just the basic networking, and what you need to do is to create a package. <coughs> Um, call it whatever you want. Um, it is tutorial twenty seven yeah, on my um, in my project list, and we will need three files, which um, the two files called message um, at the end represent represent the data structure that we're going to be using to send data um, over from one machine to another. But before we do that. Um, I'll just brief you on the tutorial. So basically this tutorial will um, show you how to use FXGL networking. Um, you don't need to have any background in network programming. I tried to make it as simple as possible by hiding most of the um, code behind FXGL API. As always, there is room for independence. If you want to use your own uh, networking engine, like I know SpiderMonkey, or your custom one, um, then you can. So um, you might just skip this tutorial if you want to. Um, if you're new to network programming, then don't worry. Everything is very simple, or at least it um, will be, um, if you use FSGL networking. So, yeah, um, most of the games have different types of servers, but generally um, there are only two types. One is single server or single client server, which is essentially a one-to-one -one, uh, one -one communication between the server and the client, like um, games that are strictly um, for two-player um, communications like um, battleship, chess, or tennis, although you could have more than two people in tennis, but still you get the idea. And other games like MMOs, um, pretty much every single MMO is a multi-client server because it's a sort of single of several servers that serve multiple clients, not just one-to-one. -one. So for this tutorial, for the, this tutorial will cover the single server, uh, which is just a class called server uh, from FXGL, 
and we're going to be using um, it with a class called client. So these are the imports for today and as always the source code will be up on GitHub so you can download, install, um, download and copy. So I think we're going to start with data structures first. Yeah. So a data structure is essentially a um, data format, so basically a class um, that holds certain values. And um, this is what we typically call data structure. Uh, so what we have is a data message. And this is going to be our update message from server to client. And the only thing we'll need, so the application is um, just two rectangles that can be controlled from different machines. So rectangle one or player one is controlled on one machine and player two is controlled by um, another computer or by a person uh, playing on a different computer. Although it is possible to run the same, uh, to run both server and the client on the same machine, which I will do to make it um, easy to demonstrate the whole thing. Um, FXGL networking uses a serializable interface to mark that a particular class can be sent, um, can be serialized and can be sent over uh, from one computer to another over the network. So your data structure must implement serializable in order to be able to uh, be sent. This serial version UID is um, essentially needed to keep track of different versions of the same class. So if the server is using uh, version 2 and the client is version 1, then um, there will probably be an exception saying versions are incompatible or something like that. But anyway, it's uh, nice to have something um, that represents the version. Uh, so x1, y1 are the coordinates for player 1 and x2, y2 coordinates for player 2. They're both sent, uh, being sent from server to client so that the uh, client can render it properly because most of the processing, or in fact all the processing is done on the server so that the uh, model is consistent across, the, uh, across multiple machines. Because if um, each of the computers, so um, server and client, were uh, doing processing, then you would have uh, inconsistent views, inconsistent models. So, um, because um, the variables would be different, and this is mainly because the runtime is not exactly the same. The speed of the CPUs and all these things, there are, there are many uh, various factors that affect the uh, sort of course of processing. So what we want to have is a single server, a single machine responsible for all the processing and all other clients are just views that um, show what the model is. What we have is a constructor for the data message. Request message is a message sent from client to the server um, requesting an action. And in our case, it is just a, an array of key codes, which are basically the keys that are currently pressed um, on the client machine. Again, it must implement serializable in order to be sent. And that's it for our data structures. And they're extremely simple. They can be as complex as you want them to be. However, each of the fields of your data structure must support, must be serializable. Otherwise, you will um, get exception. And this is our um, application file. So, network test app, um, extends game application, 
Um, if you've been following previous tutorials, then you already know the workflow. So we um, declare a type, we create an enum type for our entity type to make it type safe. Um, player 1 and player 2, these are the two entities that we have in this tutorial. So um, these are the fields. We create a server with default parameters, so we don't pass anything. You can pass, um, I think it's four, yeah, so basically two ports. Um, this is to um, use your own custom ports, like uh, for TCP and UDP connection. By default, they will be using um, these ports for TCP and this one for UDP, respectively. And again, yeah, if you haven't done any network programming, then don't worry about uh, different ports. The application will run just fine, as long as you're not using the same computer for different um, server applications, using the same FXGL or networking library. Um, the client um, takes only the IP address of the server. So this is, again, default client. Uh, if you change the TCP or UDP port on the server, you'll also need to pass them um, accordingly. But for now, the only thing we're doing is passing the IP address of the host or of the server. And in our case, it's the um, same machine, so the same computer, which means they can use uh, this value for the IP address or uh, type localhost. They're both, uh, they both mean the same thing, um, which is the same computer. Is host flag is, uh, well, it allows the application to know whether it's the server or the client. This flag will typically be initialized within the game. Like, imagine if you have a menu that says a multiplayer game, that, um, and then you click on multiplayer game, and then you're given a set of options like um, be a host of a game or connect to a host. You'll probably see those um, things from um, early games like uh, pre-2000 games. Most of the modern games are multi-server so they won't have anything like that. Is connected um, this is the flag only relevant to the server um, it states whether the client has connected or not. Then we create two entities, player one, player two, um, with different types. Um, private, yeah, so this is a map that contains uh, key codes as keys, um, and these are the keys from your keyboard. Uh, which maps to a boolean, which is true if the key is pressed and false if not. We're also going to be using Q and we initialize it with concurrent linked Q. We haven't really done any um, concurrency, so um, I'll just skip this. Um, yeah, just think of it as a Q. Um, you don't really need to worry about it too much. Settings. Um, just set width and height to 600. You don't need to do that because by default it's 800 by 600. Um, we don't have anything in assets. In initialize game, we do um, initialize networking first. And most of the interesting code is in here. Yeah. So we initialize networking, we set the position for player 1, set graphics, it's, everything is uh, pretty much the same. And then, and then we add entities um, so that we could display them on the screen. And there is no UI code. Okay, so we get to networking. Um, because it is essentially the same application code, and the only thing that is different for each uh, for server and client is just this billion flag, which states whether it's server or client. For one-to-one -one communication, um, you will typically have this kind of um, code style, 
having it in the same class and just using a flag. Um, as for multi-server, you would typically have two um, distinct applications with different um, application logic. You would have um, a separate server class and separate um, client class. Um, yeah, but here everything is in the same um, class. So what we check is um, basically this flag. So if is host, that means we are the server. So if uh, we're the server, then we add parser. So this is how you respond to incoming messages uh, from the other end of the network and the other end would be a client. So on the server, we add parser, parser for class this, which is request message class. And this is, if you remember, our data structure to request some action. And this comes from client. So this is basically a message of type request message that comes from client. And it will be delivered as this object data, which is of type uh, request message. And then you could do you could do whatever you want. It is worth noting that this um, code will be executed on a background thread and not the Java application uh, JavaFX application thread. So you cannot do any UI stuff in here. Um, if you want to, you'd have to call platform dot run later and then um, call the UI um, stuff. But for now, we're just um, queuing it um, and basically pushing this object to our request queue, which is here. And that's everything we do. We'll worry about the queue contents afterwards in the un update uh, method. So for now, as soon as the data arrives, we simply push it to the queue, and that's it. We also uh, add another parser which is for class string, which means that if a type of string, um, if an object with type string arrives, what do we do? Um, we do this. Is connected set to true. Um, this is essentially a sort of hello um, packet saying I have connected to the server and this um, message comes from client. Um, these are just parsers, so these are callbacks. Um, uh, the code that will be called back when something happens. And this something is the um, receive, uh, receiving the um, data from network. And finally, for the server code, we simply start the server. Okay. It is also important to know that when you create the server, there is nothing that could go wrong. It is essentially just an, another object, so it doesn't do anything. It simply configures the server, but doesn't actually run any um, networking code. So it is to say, uh, it is safe to create um, objects uh, within um, outside the sort of try and catch block. So this will not throw any exceptions or anything like that. And same for the client. It just configures the client, but doesn't actually run anything network related. And this does. So start will actually start the server and it will bind the default port, which is um, 55,555 for TCP and 55,556 for UDP and it will start listening on those ports. As for um, client, so basically if is host, then we run server code, else we run client code. For client, there is only a single parser, and we're expecting a da data message. And when the data message arrives, we push it to the update queue. And then there is try and catch block for connection. So client.connect will run the um, 
network operation of trying to connect to the server. If it connects, then everything is fine. If it doesn't, then there will be an exception thrown. As soon as we connected, uh, we send um, a string. It could be anything because we're not, uh, we don't really care what the content is. As long as it's a string, we say that we, um, the client has connected to our server and we set is connected to true. If there is an exception, we simply log the exception and exit the application. But this should not happen. As for input, um, if we're a server, then we do um, immediate processing of the input. Um, this is the usual stuff that we do. We add the key, key press binding. If W is pressed, then we do this. S, A, and D. Else, if we're a client, then we um, call this method with these key codes. For each key code, we put it into the map of keys and we set it to false. Uh, we set the value to false to signify that this key is currently not pressed. And we also add a key press binding for that particular key in each of these. So this is um, run for every single key code in this array, which is basically that. And the code to run is we put the key to, we set it to true, we set the value to true, saying that the key is currently pressed. This will be necessary for sending um, requests to the server. Um, well, this is the typical stuff, just we, we just launched the application. On exit, um, this is the stuff that is called uh, when you exit the application one way or another. So if we're the host, we stop the server, else we're a client, which means we need to disconnect our client. And the bulk of the code is in this on update method, which is run um, every update tick. And it is quite large because we're sort of um, handling to different application logic. Um, yeah, to different uh, applications. This is for the server and that for, is for the client. So if uh, we're the host, then we check if we're connected or if the client is connected to us. If not, just return. There's nothing to do. Uh, if uh, we are actually connected, then we pull um, an element from the request queue. If you remember, we were pushing all requests um, to that queue when um, they arrive. So um, we pull, and if you read the Java doc, it says retrieves and removes the head of this queue or returns null if the queue is empty. So we're trying to retrieve it, and we also need to check whether it's null or not. If it's not null, which means uh, we have retrieved a request, which is basically this class. Um, object of this class um, and for each of the keys we do a uh, check. If the key is W then we translate player to position same for S, A and D and if it's escape then we exit the application and this is um, we do on the server that part. Once we've handled um, requests if there are any we then send a data message which contains um, X and Y of player 1 and X and Y of player 2. And we then call um, send which takes a serializable um, object which means that 
any other object will not be uh, accepted if it's not serializable. And if it if the object is serializable but contains fields which are not, then you will get an exception. And we need to catch an exception because this is the network related code and there are many things that could go wrong. So if there is something wrong, we'll war, uh, we log the message and we exit. Again, that should not happen in this particular application because we're running it on the same machine and everything should be fine. Else, uh, so if we're a host, if we're a server, else, if we're a client, then we do pretty much the same. We pull from the update queue, we pull an element. If this element is not null, we set position of player 1 um, to x1, y1, player 2, x2, y2. This is essentially um, the update that came from the server and we simply apply that update to our client. Once we've done that, we get key codes from our keys map. We get the key set, we obtain a string to it, we then filter it using this function which takes each of these elements in the stream. So these are all um, these key codes and it retrieves a value associated with that key from the map and that and that value is either true or false because it's boolean so if it's a true then we um, continue moving forward so the element goes through to another stream if not it gets filtered out so um, then we collect all of those elements to a list and finally we convert that list to an array and assign to this um, codes object or array and then we um, construct new request message with this um, codes array and we send it to the server call um, send on client to send this to the server for processing and once we've um, sent everything we need, we um, check if the keys, um, if escape was in there, so basically if escape was pressed. If yes, then we exit, and because this already was sent to the server, server at some stage will realize that the escape was pressed and will also exit the application. If there is a, if there is an exception, we log the exception and exit. Finally we um, reset um, all the keys so we set everything to false. And that's it, we've covered everything and now it's time to do some demonstration. Um, first of all we'll um, run this as server so we set it to true and um, you will need to run this at least once, so it will start the server. We'll now, uh, we can now package it, so um, right click on the package, export, and you should see something like that. Click on Java, runnable jar file, next. Um, in this launch configuration you will need to select network test app. Um, if you've run this for the first time, it should be at the very end. If not, then um, just find it. But you must run um, from Eclipse uh, first so that it appears here. Export destination, um, for me it's desktop and um, just type name for jar file. Make sure it, it says extract required libraries into generated jar and click finish. Um, it might throw some, um, say uh, that there are warnings, just ignore them, click OK. And there will be a jar file generated um, with the name that you specified. You can now um, um, open the command line, either Windows command line or some other command line that you use. Proceed to desktop. 
and then you can run Java jar begin a jar. So this will run um, the Java uh, um, application um, in jar file um, using the command line. And because it was uh, the host flag was true, you can now replace it to false, signifying that this is the app, um, this is the client application, and we can run this from the um, Eclipse. So this is now connected to the server, and if we move the um, player one entity on the server, it will also move on the client. So the updates will be sent to the client. And if you select the client window, you can also move uh, player two. Because we're running everything from the um, JavaFX UI thread and the sort of uh, um, update loop that runs only in um, every 0 0.016 seconds, there is a delay as you can see. Um, if you were to use or if you want to have no delays, then you would need to use the one, the background threads just create a new thread and use it to send the messages. However, um, this is simply a demonstration, so I try to make the application as simple as possible, rather than trying to um, use advanced stuff. Um, anyway, that's the networking for, um, that's the basic networking in FXGL. So if you hit escape, both of the applications will close. Um, if you see a warning, this simply means that um, something was expected that did not quite happen. Um, if it doesn't throw any exceptions, then it's fine. Warnings are generally fine. And yeah, so that's it for this tutorial. We've covered, um, well, we updated the FXGL to 0.12, which is the latest currently. Um, we've done a packaging of the application. So this packaging is uh, sort of universal. It will also work with your assets and stuff because FXGL was built um, well, at least it uses the um, this uh, folder structure, the extra structure, so that when you um, use Eclipse to generate a runnable jar file, it will be placed exactly um, as it should be, so that the same, exactly the same code in your assets will find um, your assets, your actual physical files. And um, apart from that, we also did a quick test of FXGL networking. Um, and you'll also ho you hopefully learn um, some basic networking stuff. And yeah, that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll be doing a physics simulation, which is um, again, something new in 0 0.12, which contains um, integration with JBox 2D. But that's for another tutorial. And thanks for watching.